There's about 40 buttons and dials in there, so we're just trying to find the right one. It's, it's connected to the TV system, and I oh. so we'll just try to speak up and... Okay. All right, well, welcome uh, to everybody tonight. Thank you for coming. Uh, we don't normally get to see one or two people, so this is a nice crowd, and, and we're glad to see that everyone got noticed and is here to... Uh, to uh, be participating in our meeting tonight. So we're gonna go ahead and start our August 1st Planning Commission meeting. If we can start with the roll call, please. Commissioner Ruth. Here. Commissioner Newman. Here. Commissioner Christensen. Here. Commissioner Wilk. Here. Chair Welch. Here. Thank you. Okay, now we'll do the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Great, thank you. <laughs> so I have to do a little uh, reading here. Tonight's uh, meeting is Cablecast Live on Charter Communications, Cable TV Channel 8 and at and Verse Channel 99, and is being recorded to be replayed on the following Monday and Friday at 1 p.m. on Charter Channel 71 and Comcast Channel 25. Meetings can also be viewed from the city's website at uh, www.cityofcapitola.org. Our technician tonight is Victor Herman. And if you could help us out and uh, put your phones on uh, vibrate or silence, that would help us out. And so because of uh, this topic that is drawing some interest tonight, we have a card system you can see in the back. And I'll just go ahead and talk a little bit about it right now. Um, the card system is designed just to get us through the process maybe a little faster while allowing all of you to have an opportunity to express your thoughts and concerns. So there's a three card, three color system there. The green card is a one minute card. So if you think you can state your uh, thoughts within one minute, that would be great. Uh, the yellow card is a two minute card and then the orange card is a three minute card. And so what, what will happen is we get to the item that you would like to talk about tonight. Um, I will call on the green cards first and then the yellow cards and then the orange cards. And then our assistant over here, Chloe, she or Sean, somebody's gonna have a timer for us. So it will keep us on track. So that way everyone gets an opportunity to speak and uh, we can move through the meeting and get out here to relatively sensitive time. So with that, um, we'll go ahead into additions and deletions of tonight's agenda. Um, we have had additional materials for item 4B. Um, for the 120 Monterey Avenue in terms of public comment that's come in and you've all, that public comment has been shared with all of you and is available at the, at the back Okay, table. thank you Katie. And our, when the con cons consent calendar or we have some items that are continued tonight or? Yes, and they're uh, noticed as continued for, um, or listed as continued for item 3A. Uh, 3A? 23 Riverview. Okay. Okay, with that, um, well, this time is uh, our public comment time for you to speak to us on items that are not on tonight's agenda. So if there's someone out there that would like to speak to the Planning Commission that's uh, an item that's not on tonight's agenda, this is your opportunity. We'll give you uh, three minutes to come up and speak to us. Is there anybody that would like to speak about an item not on the agenda tonight? Hi, my name's Dave Fox. I live at 320 McCormick. And uh, the item I'd like to speak about is the size of the units that are proposed out on 41st. I feel that maybe the Planning Commission or the City Council might tell the, pro the uh, proponents that it's a little out of size for our city. It's going to increase our, our population by 10 percent and it won't bother me because I live on McCormick but anybody that lives near that mall they're going to be so impacted by traffic and I, I just they're going to spend a bunch of money on plans and stuff and maybe if the city gave them a little direction that maybe that's not going to work maybe they should tone it down a little bit I think that'd be great 
Thanks, Mr. Fox. And uh, this is in regards to Merlon, Merlon Geyer. That you're talking about. He's talking about the size of the units. What units? I, I believe talking you're talking about, about the amount of units, not the size. The, this Where? is you're talking about the mall. Uh, the mall. Okay. Right. The mall. Okay. So the good thing about that is we're going to have plenty of opportunity. We have not seen anything yet on that, so there are some discussions about it. But you'll have plenty of time I'm to. Sure uh, we're going to have a lot of discussion. I think the room will probably look like this tonight. Oh. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mr. Fox. Is there anybody else that would like to speak tonight on an item not on the agenda? Okay. Not seeing anybody. We'll bring it back. Uh, any commissioner comments? I have a comment. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, I'm going I'm to want to pull consent. Um, off the consent calendar item C and, and I think there's going to be some uh, also some um, debate over item A under public hearings so I'm wondering maybe if we should change the agenda and get right to 201 Monterey as in and, and, and move the the rest of the stuff to the oh, back so you're, you're asking to rearrange and put Monterey towards First. the top um, well I don't know if I think we can maybe could get the Saxon one out of the way fairly quick. What What is the flavor of the group here? Well, like I say, I'm going to want to pull a consent well, consent item. Um, yeah, I think we counter. should do the shorter items first, that even though. Yeah, well, maybe we can just get them so they're not waiting. And um, okay. So item C uh, on 3C, is it the one you're talking about? It's the uh, 1404 38th Avenue. So you'd like to pull that item when I'd we like get to there? discuss that, yes. Okay. So I'll move uh, A and B on the consent agenda. Okay, so we have a motion to approve consent calendar A and B. Second. We're, we're, we're a little bit ahead of it, but oh. we're, we're still at commission comments. Oh, we are? Okay. <laughs> so okay. Why, why don't we wait till we get down and I, I think we'll be there real quick. Is there any other commission comments? Oh, that is ADA How about staff this. comments? Any staff comments? Uh, no staff comments this evening. Okay, so now I'll go back and we'll ask for a motion for consent. You move, move uh, A and second. B. We have a second for A and B. A is being continued, right? Yeah, well, we. So, well, uh, we have a motion for A and B. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 So it looks like everyone's in favor, and we pulled item C, and so uh, we'll move that under uh, item 4A. So is that okay? Or do you, are you set up in your presentation to do 1404 38th Avenue? Now, would be easier to do that first? Yes, we can do that first. Okay, so we'll do item C first. So now we'll open up the public hearing uh, portion of this meeting, and we're going to um, take item 3C and put that uh, under initial under item 4 public hearings. Good evening, Planning Commissioners. Uh, the application before you is for 1404 38th Avenue. It's uh, a new bouldering gym and fitness studio. Uh, it includes a conditional use permit, a design permit, and a sign permit, and it's in the coastal zone. The property is immediately south of King's Plaza, and it was formerly used as the pickup warehouse for the former Orchard Supply Hardware. Um, the current, no, let me do that. the applicant is applying for special signage with a sign permit uh, that requires approval by the Planning Commission. Uh, the current zoning code does not have standards for, for parking or for use of this type of uh, application, so it requires a third-party evaluation for parking. The city contracted Kimley Horn and Associates to review the on-site parking. The evaluation found that the change in land use from a retail warehouse to a bouldering gym and fitness center would result in an increase in AM and PM trips. They concluded that the proposed parking of 53 spaces and 22 bicycle spaces is expected to have sufficient on-site parking. Um, the design permit has uh, is an aluminum frame window front entry that replaces the current metal roll-up door. There are no proposed changes to the floor area of the building. The first sign being proposed is a wall sign right above that front entry. It's a 48 square foot wall sign uh, that's less than the 90 square foot maximum allowed here. It faces 38th Avenue. A monument sign is also being proposed. 
in the community commercial zone, they are allowed to be up to 60 square feet in area and eight feet tall. And currently the sign is proposed as 24 square feet. Monument signs may typically not be displayed in conjunction with wall signs on the same frontage. Uh, this is why the applicant is requesting special signage for commercial sites located in the geographically constrained areas. Um, in order to make this uh, approval, the planning commission would have to find, make the following findings, that special signage is necessary and appropriate for the subject commercial site in order to allow the site and, and the businesses to, located there to com be competitive. Um, and that the signage is not a uh, special privilege and won't cause any adverse impacts on the surrounding area. The building is uh, set back approximately 145 feet. The applicant is requesting a wall sign and monument sign, both of which are proposed to face the same frontage. In addition to the building setback, the combined sign area for both signs is 72 square feet, which is under the 99, 90 square feet maximum allowed for the single wall sign. The commercial sites in Kings Plaza, which is adjacent to this site, on facing Capitola Road and 41st Avenue, have a mix of wall signs and monument signs for the plaza through a master sign program. The special, special signage here uh, does not apply, or adverse, sorry. Uh, the total sign area for both signs is 72 square feet as stated, which does not exceed the 90 square feet allowed for a single wall sign on the building. The signs are externally illuminated with lights directed towards the sign faces as to limit impacts on the surrounding properties. The special signage consideration for the use of two signs is for the use of two signs on the same frontage. The signs comply with all other standards in the community commercial zoning district. Staff recommends the planning commission review the application and approve the amendment, sorry, approve the uh, application for the CUP design permit and sign permit based on the conditions and findings. Okay, any questions for staff? I have a question. So where is it required that a third party um, need to be involved for a parking assessment? Can't that be done by staff? So um, within our code, when there is no standard for a type of use, we require that a third party consultant be hired. And this has been consistent with other applications for yoga studios and workout facilities throughout Capitola because we haven't had a standard. Um, so, it's, so can you quote a paragraph in the code that where, it, where it's required? Because, it, because again, I, that's, my, that's one of my big issues. I got two issues with this. And if it's required and there's nothing you can do and we have to spend all this money or have the applicant spend all this money, then fine, we should probably reevaluate that as a, as a requirement. But um. Well, for the city, you know, we, um, in order to review a conditional use permit, we need to make sure that any impacts are mitigated. So it is our responsibility to make sure that there's adequate parking on the site and that it not overflow into the residential neighborhoods that surrounds it. So when we don't have the information we need, we, are, we do have the ability to ask. Um, when somebody applies for a conditional use permit, they actually, when they give us, the, give the city, put down their deposit, it's stated that there may be additional study is necessary and that the applicant is required to pay to take care of the costs associated with their application. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions or staff? Is the applicant here that would like to speak? You, would you like to come up and speak, or? It's up to you. If you want me to think that, I'm more than happy. Well, let me ask. Are there any questions of the applicant? Uh, I just have a question about the conditions is all. Nothing for the applicant. Nothing for, okay, you're fine. Okay, with uh, that, if there's anybody else that would like to comment on the bouldering gym on 38. No? It's not seeing any. We'll bring it back to the commission for discussion. So, <laughs> since I pulled it. Um, so, I have two issues. One we just brought up, which is the parking analysis. Now. Um, the notion of that we need we need an independent consultant we once again hire Kim Lee Horn to do what seems to be a straightforward staff analysis I mean I read the report they, they, they reference a, a document that and a standard that I would think a staff member could look up I just think it's unfair for something so straightforward to require 
the applicant to um, pay for an independent analysis of this and I would recommend that we return those fees yeah um, I, I I don't know <laughs> So, so not that I'm opposed to. I, I just don't know what, what legal ability we have to do that. I think that'd probably have to go back to. Yeah. So I, I, I support what the staff did here, uh, mainly because the, the use, the, the health uh, industry uses tend to, uh, in when you're in a transition area between a commercial and a residential area, and you've got a health use, there's just a history of some of those places uh, having parking issues. And so I think that uh, taking that seriously in this application was it was a, a wise thing to do and requiring an outside review. I, I understand your concerns. I will say that this is not unusual to require this when it's something outside um, the scope of our staff. Mm -hmm. But um, hearing your concern, um, I guess are you trying? Are you making a motion? If you want to make the put on the way of a motion, we can see. If that happens, and it would then it would have to go to. I don't think we have the power to do that. I, well, I don't know that the motion would fly, but I, I guess it's something we could have staff look into. I don't. I you really know, when, don't know. Um, so, something that could be effective to address this issue is that if you would like staff within the new zoning code update to look at fitness centers in particular. Um, and the parking requirements and make sure that they're included within the updated zoning code and that we have standards included. But our, our practice has been, and I can um, give you several examples, Bar Fitness, um, Orange Theory, those are two that in my time here at Capitola that have had to do parking studies. They're part of a mixed use development in which um, in order to make sure that those uses could be accommodated on site. But I, I do think there's room for improvement on if, if you'd like us to make sure that we have specific standards within our zoning code update, that would be the appropriate place in which to include the standards. Um, so I won't make a motion if I don't have a sense that there's any backing. I don't think you're going to get backing. That was my, my, my uh, thought, but um, there, you know, there is an appeal process. I guess the applicant hearing the concern could appeal it and see what happens would probably be the best line of action. Um, it's all I know. It's been a standard practice for us to to go to the third party on these side. I agree. That we hate to put those additional <coughs> fees on applicants, so I understand that concern. But I mean, it's it's not a trivial amount, and so. I just, you know, I, I just hate to burden these applicants with this, with what appeared to me. Now, maybe Ed has indicated that no, it was it was a legitimate analysis that needed to be had. But um, <coughs> and if that's the case, then then I will throw my concern. But I, to me, it seemed. Well, we'll let you keep your concern, but at least it's stated. So. What's the uh, other I, issue? <laughs> the other issue. All right, I'll fine. I'll move on to the other issue since I'm not getting any support on this one. The other issue is the. Uh, Condition 15, which requires a landscape plan. Um, and the, the municipal code, specifically 1757070, already requires that the monument sign has to have landscaping. The notion of requiring an additional landscape plan, and even men mentions the irrigation system plan and whatnot, I just don't think condition 15 is warranted, and I'd like to have it pulled. Um. Okay, that one is something I think that we have the ability to, to discuss and work on here. I would, I would just say that it's pretty standard practice on residential homes all the way through. It requires that. Would anybody else like to have some discussion on? I think those things are absolutely necessary when we have a new project in use. Uh, and if, if we start forgoing landscape plans and parking studies to stop the overflow into residential areas, we're on a path that's not going to work. We're going to have this city hall filled every time we have a project if that's the kind of things we allow to happen. I just thought this was a pretty straightforward case and, and these these things seem to be just just added burden on the applicant. Well, they, they absolutely are burdens, but I, you know, just this is, uh, well, I know this end of the, the commission's been here for a number of years. It's, it's very standard that all projects have the uh, landscape plan even before you can 
move into your residence, you have but this, to... We're talking about a sign, the monument sign, and it's already clear that the monument sign has requirements for landscaping in the code. So to require an additional landscape plan seems redundant. I think they should be happy to get two signs here because... Uh, yeah. Uh, Once again, I am not getting any support, <laughs> right. so I'll withdraw my concerns. Yeah, this, um, this center has been kind of pushing the envelope on the number of signs already, and uh, we, now we have another one where there's going beyond what the code really provides for, and so you know, if, I think we're helping the applicant in that regard, assuming we approve this. Right. Um, so I guess I can call, ask for a motion to, in, I'll entertain one from anybody that would like to throw something out there. I move step. Of approval with the conditions uh, having been met. Okay, so I have, I have a motion. I have a, a second. A second, okay, any more discussion? Peter, do you have anything else? For, okay, so we have a motion, a second, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All of those opposed, any opposed? No, it passes, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so now we'll move to the original uh, item 4A207 Saxon under public hearings. Get a top staff presentation. Thank you, Chair Welch. <clears throat> uh, 207 Saxon tonight, we have an applicant proposing to reconstruct a 487 square foot historic garage in the R1 single family residential zoning district. Existing residence at 207 Saxon Avenue is an historic one-story one single-family home with a non-conforming historic detached garage located in the rear yard, yard shown here on the right. Here's a site plan showing the location of the garage in relation to the historic home, uh, as well as the five-inch rear setback and two-foot uh, side setback, which are non-conforming. Because the detached garage is historic, non-conforming in terms of setbacks, and located in the appealable area of the coastal zone, uh, this very small project requires a design permit, conditional use permit, and an appealable coastal development permit, as well as a variance for the side and rear setbacks, and to exceed the non-conforming structural alteration limit. The new garage, when completed, will be in the same location as the existing garage and will look exactly the same. Uh, historic projects like this require a conditional use permit, so architectural historian Leslie Dill reviewed the project for consistency with the Secretary of the Interior's standards for rehabilitation and found that with a few modifications, uh, the, it would preserve the authenticity of the structure and the site. Um, and then in terms of the variance, staff supports the variance because, uh, <clears throat> sorry, I, I'm not gonna show the two findings like we usually do here, but um, the special circumstances under finding number one is that uh, the reconstruction would allow the historic garage to maintain its relationship with the historic residents on the property, thereby preserving the authenticity of the site. And two, that it's not a special privilege because multiple adjacent properties have garages and accessory structures located in their rear and side yard setbacks, uh, shown here in yellow. So with that, staff recommends the Planning Commission approve Project 18-0278 based on the conditions of approval and findings. Okay, thanks, Matt. I'll bring it to the uh, back to the Commission for staff. Any questions for staff? No? Questions? Uh, I guess I do have some questions. Okay. So the, so he's pouring a new pad, right? Brand new. Currently, there's nothing there, and he's going to pour a foundation. No, there's no, no foundation currently. Um, so I, I read the... Um, uh, the uh, historical report and I, I, n I noticed this statement saying that being uh, that this um, garage was built after 1919 it is uh, not built during a time of significance and from that I take it that this is not a historical garage do you have any uh, comment on that? I think it couldn't that? be associated with a specific historic period that's generally how they talk about it in terms of they t talk about it in terms of relating it to certain historic periods of building within the city so that just meant it couldn't be classified age-wise it's definitely historic and that it's very old 100 years old um, but it did it wasn't associated with a specific period well so I'm confused then as to how what's the criteria specifically for establishing that a, a lean-to is historic I think you'd have to ask the historian. And <laughs> well, and again, we I read the report, and what I got out of it, it is 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 not uh, built during a time of significance. Hence, 
I'm reading that is not really that historic. I mean, they go by the, you know the Sanborn maps, which show the locations of buildings on the site at different times during you know the early uh, 1900s, 1920s, that time period. Uh, and one of the things in terms of authenticity is the relationship of uh, his structures of that age in relation to each other on the site, and that's something that's supposed to be preserved uh, under the Secretary of the Interior standards. So, if it's old and it has a, a established relationship to the the more historic main home, uh, there. By extension, it's it's an important historic element of the property. Thank you. So, and I, I just add that you know we have I believe five different lists of historical type buildings within Capitola, and all of them have different methods for being on that list. And I I know that the historical building uh, year time frame is is pretty lenient for for those type of homes. So. Um, I don't know. Anybody else have any discussion? Well, this any is other just questions? Comments, right. This is just questions. Okay. Any other questions for staff? No? Okay. At this time, will uh, is the applicant here? Would the applicant like to speak? Go ahead, sir. I think you can hear me. <coughs> Good evening, Council. Um, our family has been involved. Your name, please. He Oh, I'm sorry, John Nicholson. Okay. I'm one of the co-owners of 207 Saxon. Okay. Been a family home for almost 60 years. And uh, <clears throat> our family first became involved on Saxon Avenue in the 1930s when my mother's family had a summer home that they traveled to by horse and carriage. <laughs> so we've been, we've been there a while. Right. <laughs> Um, I'm basically here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Mr. Nicholson. Any questions from the applicant? No? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Nicholson. It looks like we don't have Could, no questions for you. turn this in somewhere? Or you don't need to do it. Thank you. You can leave it right there if you want. That's fine. <laughs> Appreciate that. I will say that Mr. Nicholson was an ideal historic homeowner in terms of historic preservation. Really enjoys living in a historic house on, on Depot Hill. Wasn't interested in changing it. Just wanted to rebuild it the way it was. Um, but you know, with a stable foundation and structure. Right, uh, so. totally understood, and we appreciate you trying to preserve that. Okay, uh, any qu anybody else in the audience that would like to talk on this matter? Okay, not seeing none, I'll bring it back to the commission for discussion. So I've got a couple of so comments again, if you want me to jump you're, right in. You're, you're welcome to jump in, this is your opportunity. <laughs> So I, uh, th there was a, a letter that came in from a neighbor, right, that re re has requested that it be a two-foot setback on the back as well as the on that's currently on the side. Since he's pouring a new foundation anyway, uh, I would think that would be worth considering. Um, that and the fact that, again, in my opinion, it's great that he's rebuilding it the way it the way it is, but. I'm not sure there's a uh, there's that strong of a case that this is historic and so uh, moving it um, a foot and a half um, I don't think would be that big of a burden and, uh, and I, I wouldn't object to the vinyl windows either okay uh, go ahead Courtney we like to I was just if we could pull up the map the mm -hmm. this one yeah the other. just in response to Peter's I I disagree. <laughs> I think that the the complaint came from the neighbor. The neighbor's uh, structure sits on the property line, and I don't see why he would have to move his proposed structure to appease when everybody else seems to be right on the property lines. <laughs> That's my <laughs> Very good. Anybody else? This is a case where uh, I know that our chair has often had things to say about the historic uh, rules that haven't always been favorable, but this is a case where it's working to the benefit, actually, of the applicant. It's, and it uh, makes sense to me. I mean, I read the neighbor's uh, concerns, but uh, I'm in favor. I, I would agree. I, I oft, often have concerns about the Secretary of Interior standards, this being a garage, and having gone and looked at it today, I would agree with uh, Commissioner Christensen that it's right on 
the, the neighbor that also had concerns is also on the property line. Their gutter is basically on, right at that fence line. So, um, you know, it's, it's a shared area. And this is one of the really the only advantages I can see in some of these times of this having the historic thing and, and talk about fees. The applicant had to pay an additional fee to have the historian, uh, architectural historian, do a review of this as well. And, and so that money could pay off in the sense that moving it forward really puts in disproportion to where the house is and would cause an inconvenience there. So in this case, I would support um, the uh, staff, ref staff recommendations on uh, the document, so, or the house. I'll move approval. Okay, Conditions so as stated. Okay, we have a motion. I second. A motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And any opposed? Aye. <laughs> 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 a reluctant aye. <laughs> okay, thank you, sir. Good luck. A grumbling. A grumbling. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, that moves us to uh, item 4B, which is, I assume is, I don't see anybody leaving other than uh, Mr. Nicholson right now, so I assume that's why, you hear, why you're here. Uh, and so we would like all of you that would like to speak have that opportunity. So a couple of things, I'll, I'll go back over the card system. We do have a card system in the back. Um, the green is a one minute card, the yellow is a two minute card, and the orange is a three minute card. So if you'd like to speak, if you could grab a card and uh, we'll call them green first and yellow and then orange and try to allow all of you to have your voice. Secondly, just in the interest of transparency, uh, my daughter w works for the applicant that's uh, applying tonight, um, not on this project. And um, so we reached out, I ha we had the city attorney reach out to the uh, California Fair um, Practice Commission to look in political practice commission to see if that would be a conflict of interest and they deemed that it was not a conflict of interest for me to participate. Um, one, two, this meeting tonight also, and the reason why we're here is to get input, uh, the applicants get any input uh, as a conceptual review and we are, as a commission are not taking any action on, the, on this tonight as far as approval. This is just a time for uh, the applicant to get insight from the community, and which are those folks that chose to come tonight, and, and the letters that we re uh, received already, and then some insight from what the uh, Planning Commission themselves uh, have looked at. So I uh, just wanna make sure those two items were out there, and let me see if I have anything else. I think um, that should do it. So with that, we'll have a staff report. <coughs> Um, good evening, Commissioners and Chairperson Welch. I wanted to let you know that um, we have reached out to our um, IT. Um, um, Heather Haggerty will be, she's here, she's setting up our overflow room in the community room so that we'll have more chairs set up and a comfortable situation for all those to participate. So very soon we'll have a live stream going in the next door room and available seating for everyone to make this a more comfortable seating for everyone so we'll you'll be informed when that room is ready um, and with that i'll um matthew orbach will be presenting so Great. all right thanks katie <laughs> yeah. oh and the room is ready i just got the thumbs up so if anyone would like to have a more comfortable seat they'll be live streaming right next door and you can when it's time for public comment you can come and get in line during the appropriate um, with your cards so feel free to go next door and get a comfortable seat right across the lobby don't forget to grab a card on your way out And just so everyone knows about in terms of when public comment will occur, I'm going to give a presentation. Uh, the applicant's going to give a presentation. Then we'll take public comment, and then we'll go back to the planning commission for their discussion. So, just so you know where, it, where public comment is in the order of things. All right. I think the the movement stopped. So I'll go ahead and start here. So tonight, the applicant is seeking guidance on a preliminary development concept for a five-story, 88-room hotel with 92 on-site parking spaces at 120 Monterey Street in the CV Central Village Zoning District with a VS Visitor Serving Overlay Zone. 
The conceptual review process provides an opportunity for a developer to receive early feedback on a concept prior to submitting a full application. This evening, I will introduce the project, then give the applicant the floor for a presentation. Following the presentation, the Planning Commission will discuss each of the items they are requesting guidance on. The proposed site is located in the Capitola Village between the intersection of Monterey Avenue and Capitola Avenue and Esplanade Park. The site is along a major pedestrian thoroughfare between the beach parking lots and the beach. It is one of the last undeveloped sites within the Capitola Village. In the past decade, the city has focused numerous long-range planning discussions on future redevelopment of the 120 Monterey Avenue site and created goals, policies, and actions within the 2014 general plan, specifically incentivizing a hotel at the site through increased floor area ratio and height. Action LU 7.3 states that hotels in the village may be developed with a maximum floor area ratio of three if authorized by the city council. To approve a request for an increased floor area ratio, the city council must find that one, the additional floor area ratio results in a superior project with substantial community benefit, two, the project enhances economic vitality, and three, the project is designed to minimize adverse impacts to neighboring properties. <laughs> <coughs> General Plan Policy LU 7.5 establishes a hotel guiding principles. Any new hotel proposed on the site of the former Capitola Theater must be consistent with the following. The design of the hotel should respect the scale and character of neighboring structures and enhance Capitola's unique sense of place. The hotel should contribute to the economic vitality of the village and support an attractive, active, and engaging pedestrian environment. The maximum height of the hotel should remain below the elevation of the bluff behind, and the bluff behind the hotel should remain legible as a green edge with existing mature trees maintained on site. The hotel design should minimize impacts to public views of the beach and village from Depot Hill, and parking for the hotel should be provided in a way that minimizes vehicle traffic in the village and strengthens the village as a pedestrian-oriented destination. This could be achieved through remote parking, shuttle services, and valet parking arrangements. A new zoning code was adopted by the City Council in 2018, but it is pending adoption by the California Coastal Commission before it goes into effect inside the coastal zone. <coughs> Therefore, the new code does not yet apply to this site. The property owner has indicated that they plan to submit an official application for a hotel once the new zoning code is adopted by the Coastal Commission. Typically, a project is reviewed under the development standards in the code at the time of application. However, at the request of the applicant, this conceptual review will be analyzed under the 2018 zoning code. This will allow the applicant the opportunity to continue working on the conceptual design in preparation for an application submittal once the code is certified. The general plan guidance on the proposed hotel site was included in the 2018 zoning code within chapter 17.88, incentives for community benefits. This chapter identifies allowances for an increased floor area ratio of three and increased height on the site in conjunction with the property owner providing community benefits. All applications seeking these increased incentives within chapter 17.88 require conceptual review by both planning commission and city council. The applicant will be required to submit an updated conceptual review after Coastal Commission's certification of the code if they ultimately seek the incentives included in the updated zoning code. The future application would also be required to include additional analysis on community benefits. Also, as drafted, the new code will require story polls on the site during the required conceptual review. So with that, I'll get into uh, the brief overview of the project. The proposed site is less than one acre. With a floor area ratio of three, the maximum floor area is three times the size of the property. The floor area ratio of the proposed hotel is 75,900 square feet, which is a floor area ratio of 2.62. This does not include the underground parking garage, which is located below grade and is not visible from the street. The architectural style of the hotel is California Spanish, also known as Spanish Revival, which is reminiscent of mission-style architecture found throughout coastal California. The style utilizes deep-set windows, tile, wood trim, textured stucco finish, ornamental metalwork, and incorporates courtyards, patios, and a plaza. The first level would serve the street frontage, with the main hotel entry and a bar and lounge located along Monterey Avenue. 
The first story includes the front desk, banquet room, two meeting rooms, boardroom, kitchen, and the entry to the underground parking garage off of El Camino Media. The second story has 37 guest rooms, a pool, and a pool deck. It also connects to the proposed public plaza. The third story has 26 guest rooms, a garden, the upper pool deck, and a seating area with a fire pit. Fourth story has 15 guest rooms with no additional hotel amenities. And the fifth and final story has 10 guest rooms and an elevator mechanical feature. The building ranges from two to three stories along the front facade on Monterey Avenue, with the height of the building ranging from 26 to 38 feet. As the building increases in height, the massing decreases. In addition, the building steps back further from the street at each level after the second floor, as shown on this slide. The fifth story is stepped back 85 feet from the street and is 56.5 feet in height. The elevator mechanical room on the roof of the fifth floor extends to a height of 58 feet. The top of the bluff behind the hotel, as presented by the applicant, is 63 feet, so the highest point of the proposed hotel is 5 feet under the bluff. In terms of parking, the Capitola Municipal Code requires one space for each guest room for hotels, with additional spaces for owners and employees determined by the Planning Commission. The proposed 88-room hotel includes 92 on-site guest parking spaces in an underground parking garage, 45 of which are provided via mechanical lifts, and the utilization of 25 to 50 parking spaces in the upper beach and village parking lot for employee parking, oversized vehicles, and large events. The City of Capitola's in-lieu parking fee program, which was established for new hotel uses in the village, is contained in Administrative Policy I-33. The program allows eligible hotel development projects to purchase off-site parking spaces from the city in lieu of providing on-site parking. An applicant for an eligible hotel project may request to purchase any or all of the allotted 56 spaces designated for the program. In order to approve an application for in-lieu parking, the City Council must make the following findings. The proposed project is consistent with the City's local coastal plan and the Coastal Act. Off-site parking for the proposed project would reduce traffic impacts and provide a design more consistent with the historic character of the village. And the proposed project will help to facilitate the City's economic development goals. This conceptual plan also provides three possible scenarios that could serve the village and hotel to help mitigate vehicle traffic impacts from the proposed project. Circulation option one shown here would make Monterey Avenue a two-way street leading to a roundabout at the Esplanade. Circulation option two would reverse traffic on Esplanade. And circulation option three would leave the circulation pattern as is. These concepts have not been analyzed by a traffic engineer to assess the benefits and shortcomings of each option. Prior to investing in circulation studies, the applicant would like guidance on whether there are preferred options or if there are any options that should not be studied. So that'll conclude my first portion of the staff overview of the project. Uh, in summary, the applicant is gonna be requesting guidance on the following areas, design, massing, and articulation, height, parking, traffic circulation, and public benefits. Uh, I have slides for each of these that I can bring up later after they give their presentation and we take public comment. Great, thanks, Matt. Any questions for staff? Before? I have one. On number one up there, design, massing, and articulation, just exactly what do you mean by articulation? Uh, I think it's the how the levels are set off from one another. Is it like the stepping? Yeah. Of the height? Okay. Okay, any other questions for staff? Okay, not seeing any questions. We'll have, uh, I guess, applicant. Jesse, you're going to... Good evening. Uh, thank you for having me here. Uh, my name is Jesse Bristow uh, with Swanson Builders. I'm a development project manager. And uh, I just want to thank the Planning Commission for hearing us tonight. We really appreciate it. And thank you for your public service. So how we'd like to start tonight, essentially, with this conceptual project is obviously there's community input and there's city goals and there's project goals for, for us as a builder. So 
when we look at this project from Swanson's stand, um, point of view, it, it could be a legacy project. This could be a landmark hotel. Um, it's something that could be monumental for the village and, and be, a, be an attraction. But also at the same time, we have to take into consideration the design and the cost to build. And then also we need to understand those operations and how an operator can work down at the village per the general plan requirements and you know requirements under a, a full service hotel. The other points that need to be considered for the city of Capitola is that it could be a great economic driver for the village, uh, but we also need to look at the village impacts. And uh, But again, this is a project that could support the local businesses in the village and the city of Capitola. So we're here tonight uh, wanting to get feedback and looking to see you know, how can we um, come to something that the community wants, uh, the city wants, and what we can do as a builder. And so if, if this isn't the project that you can support, you know, what can we do? You know, what is something that you could support? So that's something we'd like to get back um, from this meeting tonight. So we'd like to start off with the history of the Capitola Hotel. Um, there's a beautiful mural, uh, mural to the left of us. Uh, this was the historic Heen Hotel. It was 160 rooms. And as you heard, we are proposing 88 rooms. And um, so it's always been a discussion for the community of how can we kind of bring this back, uh, as we'll discuss in the general plan, or something that is, you know, is, that echoes it. So the original hotel uh, had, has 160 rooms. It was, I believe it was built in 1904. It might have been a little bit earlier. It was the centerpiece of the village until it burnt down. So um, ever since that, uh, that time period, uh, it then operated as a cinema for about 50 years. And it's currently being utilized as a private parking lot for village and beach access. So over time, there's been a lot of different iterations of this project. In 1995, there was a different architecture firm that, that was working towards that. In 2009, that was one of Swenson's first proposal. And in 2010 was where it was really engaged with the community with the general plan update. So the general plan had four focus areas, uh, and one of those areas being the village. And for that community uh, meeting, they were, they were held over two days. Uh, there's 100 plus people, and uh, we did a village charrette. Uh, well, not me, but our, our firm. Um, so, and from the takeaway of that, as you see the, the project on the left in, in 2010, the, the scale was too big. The three stories was not um, accepted uh, for the street facade. You know, it wasn't to scale. It, it didn't. Um, it didn't line up with the existing buildings in the village. So, here we are, about nine years later. Um, and we've taken the feedback that was given from those community meetings and adopted in the general plan, and it's been applied to this hotel. So again, we're trying to maintain that human scale um, that exists in the village, and then the massing for a full service hotel to actually operate is a step to the back towards the cliff. So we'll go over the concept with, which Matt kind of already did a little bit. But um, so this is at uh, the view from Monterey at the split. And uh, as we discussed, you know, we're, we're going with a more traditional architectural style, something you'd find along the California coast. And you can find it um, in, in the village. Uh, it, we wanted to keep the massing and the scale in line with the Britannia Arms and similar to what you find at, at Sal's ice cream. So, uh, you know, when you're walking around enjoying the village, it, you can go buy it without thinking it is a hotel that steps back further. This is the viewpoint from Capitola and Monterey. <laughs> this is the viewpoint fr from Capitola and, and Monterey. And um, again, you know, we're trying to draw the, draw the line towards the beach, be, be similar in scale to, uh, to the neighboring buildings. There's one architectural feature in the middle uh, of the, the front facade that allows for two suites. Um, but again, you know, we feel that this design, this style provides articulation that is compatible uh, with the village. Here's an aerial view. And um, as you can see, and as Matt discussed, every floor goes up, it steps back. Uh, and we're trying to push it towards the bluff. Um, and one of the public benefits that we want to provide 
uh, as part of this hotel moving forward is uh, doing um, kind of a reconstruction for the bathrooms and for the junior guard facilities. So we're not taking them away, but we want to reinforce it. We want to provide a public plaza along the deck that is um, open to the public and adds to the to the bandstand, which people can utilize during you know the winter ice skate and um, you know the lifeguards can use it, whatever. Uh, however, the community sees fit, but that would be belong to the community and be part of the Esplanade Park. It would just um, have a connection to the hotel users. So the project summary um, estimated 75,000 square feet. Um, we have 1,400 uh, square feet of meeting room space, 2,000 square feet of, of uh, banquet room, 88 rooms. We have a bar lounge for uh, just under 4,000 square feet, a pool, public plaza and courtyard, parking spaces. Uh, we have 92 on site, and we're thinking we would probably try to allocate 25 to 50 in loose spaces from the city. And the reason why we're providing these, these meeting rooms and the banquet rooms is it really helps with the shoulder season for a full, full service hotel. And we've met with, uh, with local business groups uh, in Capitola. And one thing that they found, it's very challenging to find meeting spaces within the city. They often have to go to Santa Cruz or go to Watsonville to hold events, to host people, when in reality they should be able to show off the beauty of the village. And we're hoping to, to provide uh, for that. And again, as the uh, the hotel height bluff, which which Matt did uh, did go over, and just highlighting that we're trying to maintain that human scale at steps back as every floor goes up. Um, it is uh, 56 and a half feet, 56 uh, eight inches, um, give or take, at the top of the hotel, and we do have a, a elevator mechanical room um, for the elevator. And and today. Uh, Realistically, that elevator, it could be um, a roomless one or one that's based underneath the, ele the, um, the elevator at the base. Um, this is just uh, conceptual. But if it is to exist, we'd like to apply architectural features uh, to mask it so it's not an eyesore. Um, and, and again, uh, from the streets, 56 feet. But from the slope of the bluff, it's at about 46 feet. So. Again, this massing and scale can be uh, a little concerning, but it already exists in the village today. And just because it's not one hotel under one hotel operator, it, it is present. And it's on the opposite side, and it's the Venetian, and it's the Harbor Lights. And the top of the Harbor Lights, we estimate from the beach line, is about 53 feet. And they're doing the same exact thing. It all steps back to maintain that human scale, maintain that relationship with the beach. And that's what we want to do. That's what we want to emphasize and, and still make it feel like a village. So uh, as Matt discussed with the circulation options, uh, the split at Monterey, one of the options that we're recommending and we've discussed with Public Works and of course need to be further studied, but perhaps we can contribute um, to, to working on a roundabout at the, at the end of Monterey. We make Monterey a two-way street, convert the split to a roundabout where people who are utilizing the beach, junior lifeguards drop off. Whenever you're trying to get to that end of the beach, instead of having to go through Stockton and onto the Esplanade, it's a shorter pickup, and it could direct that, um, that destination traffic from Bay Avenue onto Capitola and uh, from Monterey. And with the, the reverse traffic option, uh, this was presented to city council, I think about 10 years ago, but it was never, the, the trigger wasn't pulled, so to speak. And, uh, but essentially, again, all that busy traffic that comes off of Bay and comes off of Monterey, instead of having it come off um, Opal Cliffs and Cliff, uh, Cliff Drive on the other side, it's coming directly from the freeway access. So hoping to alleviate some of that that's coming towards the Esplanade and to the a potential hotel, and then afterwards can uh, go towards those businesses. And again, option three uh, it would be as is. We would uh, hope to implement a port cochere, because per the general plan, uh, to offer valet services to help mitigate some of that traffic. So people pull up, offload, and the valet takes it either to the upper parking lot or down below to the parking garage. So currently, as it stands, it's a 26 space parking lot that exists today. 
and um, during the busy season, uh, in the peak season, there's an average of six and a half trips per parking space. So for every car, you have two trips. You're having an entrance and an exit. And so people go to that parking lot because they know they can park there for the day and they utilize it. Uh, the benefit of the hotel is that what we're trying to promote and accomplish is long-term visitors. So instead of having someone just visit for four hours and leave and adding to traffic, we're having someone stay for four days. We're having them stay for the week and for the weekend. And um, economic studies show that people who visit for a day spend way less than people that go on a long-term visit. So that's the idea. We have people here frequenting the, the businesses and enjoying the beach and not having to hop on Highway 1 to go back over the hill to go back to you know, 101 to go down south wherever they came from to visit uh, the village. So our parking, uh, right now there's uh, conceptually 67 stalls and then we added stackers, uh, which I believe gave us 24 spaces, um, which bumped us up to, oh, I'm sorry. But it bumped us up to 92 total. Uh, the, and we try to purchase uh, or hope to purchase 25 to 50 spaces. And again, you, you know, there has been concern <coughs> that those spaces are utilized during the summer. They're full by 10 o'clock. It's, it's a sought after area to, to park. And so when the, our hope is, is that we can work with the city and some type of parking agreement where we have an, an extra um, surplus of parking at the time or during the shoulder season, we don't see a reason why we can't offer those as public parking, uh, at the same as we offer public parking at the site now. So, you know, there's, there's some flexibility there and some partnership there to help quell some people's concerns. So the, the general plan, um, as Matt discussed, it, it says uh, appropriately <coughs> designed to enhance the vitality. And so us as a builder and as a developer, we've, um, been invested in this project for over 10 years and we've been waiting for the general plan to call for this project which it does and we've been waiting for the LCP plan to allow something um, uh, of this uh, of this character and so um, today's that day or we're inching towards it uh, with the LCP adoption uh, and, and the zoning ordinance uh, update so uh, policy land use uh, 610, Village Hotel considered the establishment of appropriately designed new hotel um, and to enhance the vitality of the area. So what we're trying to do and what we felt we've accomplished is we're trying to maintain the human scale at the street level. Uh, we're providing the California Spanish architecture and the, the whole idea of this hotel, this scale and, and this design is to cater to a larger number of visitors for the economic benefits to the village and the local businesses. So we understand the concerns of the size, but there are obviously trade-offs for, for economic vitality. Uh, policy land use 7.5. Um, design the hotel should respect the scale and character of the neighboring structures, which we've tried to do at that street level. We understand this is a, a larger project than people are used to, but we're trying to maintain that, that feel and look of the village as it ex exists today. Uh, the hotel should contribute to the economic vitality of the village and support active alternative uh, uses, engage in pedestrian environment. We want to have people park and stay long term, create that walkability. We also want to, um, as we'll discuss, we want to try to do a bike share program either with the independent operator or such as jump or, or line bike. Um, and also we're willing to provide a, a system in uh, from the hotel, same as the Dream Inn, they offer their own rental bikes as well. Um, the maximum height of the hotel should remain uh, below the elevation of the bluff and maintain that that green that green area. And you know, to our best efforts, that we're, that is what we're doing. We're not exceeding the bluff. There is a buffer, and again, we're 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 trying to fit all the boxes here that the general plan is asking of us. Uh, hotel design should minimize impacts to public views of the beach and the village from Depot Hill. We're not exceeding uh, deep the, the bluff line at Depot Hill. You can still look down onto the village and as we step it back, you c it, it creates a better viewpoint down onto the village. Uh, parking for the hotel should be provided in a way that minimizes vehicle traffic in the village and that's through um, off-site parking, shuttle and valet parking and we're trying to do all of those things. We would offer all of those items. And that's one of the 
the reasons why this uh, hotel has so many rooms is because you need a higher room count to provide a full service hotel. A full service hotel has a valet parking, it has shuttle, it has different, different bike programs. So uh, action land use uh, 7.3, the, the floor area ratio of 3.0, and um, it is in the code as well. It's for the community benefits, with which Matt went over a little bit. But we are providing a public plaza addition to the Esplanade Park with uh, improvements to the junior guard facilities, uh, community meeting space within the village. Uh, we are, we're proposing a bar lounge uh, uh, to encourage hotel users to frequent the existing restaurants. We don't want to provide a competing restaurant uh, into the village. And so we would just have a, a, a bar lounge with a pantry kitchen, which would also support potential catering events. Uh, the parking program, as spaces become more available, we'd offer them to, uh, if we have a surplus, we'd offer them to the public. So we bring up the Fairfill Inn and Suites uh, because it's a similar product that exists in Capitola today. And, and it was a project that was uh, a little scary uh, to the community. And it's now settled, it's now part of 41st Avenue and it operates very successfully today. It has 84 rooms, it's three stories at 41st and it steps back to four stories. It has a pool, a fitness center and a meeting space. And this year they have a 90% occupancy. In uh, 2018, they had 88% occupancy and 89% occupancy. And when we've reached out to local hotel operators, that is very high. That shows that there's a demand and that there's a need for something else. The additional community uh, benefits, it's utilizing a vacant site or keeps visitors exploring the village on foot. Uh, promotes visitors to Capitola Village, provides meeting space, activates village during the off season, and the public facilities, beach plaza, restroom, and the upgrade to the junior guard facilities. The economic benefits, we estimate that this project could generate $1.3 million in TOT tax, and uh, there are percentages that are allocated to the early childhood education, which would be $4,500 a year, and then five, a little over $5,000 per year to local business groups. So that is direct revenue to the general fund of just under $1.3 million for public services, for firefighters, for police, for whatever the city needs to use. Um, so we, we think there's a, a great ec economic benefit that could be taken advantage of here for the city. Additional economic benefits, year-round tourism for Capitola and the village merchants, converting day trips to long-term visitors, uh, additional sales tax revenue at 9% for the bar and lounge, and the creation of 200 plus construction jobs and 40 uh, long-term hotel jobs. So again, you know, at the beginning of this presentation, we asked, is this a design, a concept that something planning commission uh, could support? You know, the community uh, general plan calls for it and we're trying to meet those standards. And so if this doesn't work, we'd really like to know what will and we appreciate your feedback. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. Any questions for Jesse before you? I have some. Yes. You mentioned the concept of possibly sharing the parking in the upper parking lot with the city through the yes. new parking plan. I can't quite figure out how that works. If, if the if the visitors are using your parking, then where are your employee? So of the just going to park. Oh, I think that. But you mean the sharing between our visitors and our employees, or or for the public? No, you you mentioned that you could work out a possible compromise with the city where the public could use those in lieu spaces yeah. at certain times of yes, the year. Yes, whenever they came available, I think we'd be able to allow them to either park under the hotel or at the, at the upper parking lot, whatever became available, if there's a surplus of. Okay. Uh, is the large eucalyptus tree behind Britannia Arms scheduled to be removed? Not, not to my knowledge. Um, I'd have to look at the parcel map, but uh, we've done a lot of, uh, sure. It's not on the rendering. Yeah, sorry, I don't have it on the rendering. Um, but so w we've looked at, um, we've explored options of actually building the hotel against the bluff, and that is not feasible. It's also very expensive. So there is an existing brick, um, historic, I don't know if it's historic, but an, an older brick, uh, 
brick retaining wall that goes up about nine or 10 feet. Uh, essentially in this design, we would reinforce it, but the hotel would have no relationship with the bluff physically at all. So we, we do own the bluff technically, the parcel goes up, but we- This eucalyptus tree isn't on the bluff. Okay, then no, we, I don't think we'd own it, so we wouldn't remove it. So we have no intention of removing any, any trees. Tanya arms. Uh, I don't think that is our tree, but any of the trees on the bluff, we have no intention of removing. Okay. Uh, in the roundabout concept, yes. I noticed the palm tree is gone. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, so you know, that's an iconic feature in Capitola Village. Well, I'm, I'm sure we could work around it. <laughs> uh, what are the banquet room capacities and the meeting room capacities? Uh, I'm not a firefighter, TJ. So over 2,000 <laughs> square feet for the banquet room. Um, I'm not sure about that one. I, w I would guess maybe, I don't know, 50 to 100 people. I I'm not sure. Okay. They, can those be yeah, can those rooms be utilized by non-hotel guests? Absolutely. So you can have conferences? Absolutely. That's the intent. Things like that? Absolutely, yes. Okay. So where would those people park? So uh, the, the, the idea is that during the busy season would mainly be hotel operations. During that slower fall season, spring, winter season, that's when companies usually do retreats and things like that, um, or conferences. I, I know some happen in the summer, but the idea is that the majority of the parking would be for the, um, dur during the shoulder season, cars would directly park under and any overflow would be for those events. So will Swinson own and operate the hotel or will they sell it? Uh, we may own it, but we would not operate it. We are not, we're not a hotel operator. Okay. Uh, is the swimming pool absolutely, absolutely necessary? Um, I think that's, you know, open to opinion, okay. but, um, <laughs> your point taken. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Did you have a question? Yeah, I have a couple. Um, one concern that one of the, um, one of our citizens raised in the materials we got was had to do with the floodplain mm -hmm. so you're doing subterranean parking in an yes. area that's below the floodplain and mm -hmm. what's your plan for that sure so uh, downtown Santa Cruz is in the floodplain uh, we have a lot of buildings we've done a lot of garages it's um, a practice that's pretty common um, it happens throughout San Jose and, and San Francisco it's just the technology's gotten better but um, when it comes to that uh, garage, it's, it's essentially, it's a big bathtub, except it's meant to keep, keep out the water. But in a flood event, it's meant to take on water. It's meant to mitigate. You're supposed to flood the garage. Usually there's two pumps in the garage. If one fails, the other one uh, kicks on, and that water gets pumped into the sewer system. Well, uh, I know, I mean, downtown Santa Cruz, got flooded in 1955 and maybe once again but Capitola in that area gets flooded almost every year every winter yeah and so in an event are you speaking of a rain flood or are you speaking of a ocean flood well it can ocean be either, actually sure we so in, in in the terms of an ocean event um, the entrance to the the hotel is on Camino Medio so that is the highest point. There's about a two to four foot slope from the corner of Britannia Arms to the top. So it's at the highest point. So it's, you know, it's held off as much as it can. All right, so in that event, uh, I'm sure the rest of the village will still, like the other half will be underwater, but ocean water would go into the garage. It's intended to flood. That's, that's how they're designed. And, in, and perhaps it, it acts as a mitigation because it's gonna flood first before it floods other areas. Um, but that's how it would work in a rain event as well. So, but I, I think in a rain event, the idea is for it to flood and pump it out into the sewer system. My other question, and you might not be able to answer this yet, kind of follows up on what Commissioner Ruth asked about what your plans are for the uh, ownership of the hotel. And my question is, when, do you know if when you come through with an application, you would be looking at a subdivision so that it could be a condominium style hotel, much like Seascape or Sure, so um, two responses to that. Uh, Coastal Commission does not want to see that type of product. They want to see a hotel. They want to see visitor serving uses and they want it to be accessible to, um, to everybody. So when you, when you privatize it in a sense of that way to ownership, um, it's a no-no in their, in their viewpoint. Um, also, it's, uh, 
the sea i'm sorry is this a seascape resort the seascape resort so that was done in the 60s so after the the housing crash those are financially tricky to fund um, banks do not like those because there's an ownership percentage and there's a lot of debt and it's it's not something banks would approve that's why you don't see them today so your answer is that's not really contemplated no thank can you I, can i have one clarification oh, go ahead. yeah you mentioned that if the parking garage underground parking garage filled with water or had water in it you'd <laughs> pump it into the sewage system yeah sanitation district doesn't allow that coast you, can't, you coast can't pump storm drain water into the sewage system i think in a catastrophic event you can uh coastal commission directed us saying that that's where it has to go because of the uh the contaminated oil they don't want it going back out to the ocean from from drip pans or from cars you might want to check with sanitation district policies sure Thank you. Commissioner Welk or Christensen, you have questions for Jesse? Um, I had a question. Sure. Um, what was, I wanted to clarify why it was 88 rooms. Again. Sure, yeah, so uh, we, we've met with a few hotel operators and, and again, the, the services that the general plan calls out for us to provide and uh, which requires a hotel of this scale, which would be full service. So to have a fully functioning full service hotel, uh, uh, just short of having a restaurant, you need close to 100 rooms. Um, we, we've reached out to some operators that are very excited about this project, as, you know, uh, in comparison to other hotel opportunities we've looked at. And this is an established market. It's obviously a destination. It's a beautiful area. Um, this is the one that, that they want us to keep them uh, up to date. But they've said, if you can get as close to 100 rooms as possible, that's what's feasible. Um, thank you. But is there, was there a reason, um, the proposal of the underground garage, as opposed to maybe helping fund a parking structure, is there, um, was there any preferred reasoning behind that? Uh, I don't, I don't think so. I think, um, I mean, one, well, it depends on the type of structure, but every floor you go up in a parking structure, the cost becomes almost exponential. It's, that's definitely certain if you go one floor or two floor, floors down. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if we would be able to partner with the city to do a parking garage in that time span. Um, I, I'm not sure if, if Jesse Nickel wanted to speak to that. In general, you really want to have the parking. Jesse Nickel from Barry Swenson, Senior Vice President. You usually want to have the parking. You usually want to have one parking space per room. There's a general rule of thumb. Once you know, and you're going to have valet offsite as well, and so you'd have. Um, so it's important to have that relationship between on-site parking and the room. Thank you. But you know, it, we don't have it in the makings to. I mean, financially, it's really challenging. This project is very risky. So for us just to even like sell this to our, our CEO is a challenge. Yeah. So, you know, so we're just, we're doing something that's economically viable. We think we could work and trying to meet all the guidelines that are set forth among us. And today, and tonight is just about listening, being an active listener and what the community wants and maybe a hotel's not appropriate there. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Welk, do you have anything to ask? Um, I was just curious about the water credit. Um, issue heavy heavy how hard to be where is that still an obstacle or do you think you have a path to uh... so this the city of Capitola I believe has 5.3 acres uh, a foot acre of um, of water credits uh, this hotel realistically would need a probably about 15 or 16 um, the offset uh, we would purchase them from SoCal Water Creek District they currently have a surplus of I want to say 30 to 50 water credits um, but, it, but again, it, it's, it's expensive to do that. So, uh, so you, you still have a lot of work to do, is that what you're saying, to, to work well, with I haven't, guys? Well, we, we haven't pursued allocating water credits if this is something that um, is not supported. Um, you know, th that, that pathway can become very expensive. So we want to make sure this is something that is welcomed before we pursue that. But it is it is possible. They're they're available for purchase today for for future development. So you don't feel it's an insurmountable object or obstacle. Uh, no, I don't think so. All right. Okay, if that's all the questions the commission has. We're going to open this up for.
public questions and uh, comments. So we're going to start off with the, thank you, Jesse. We're going to start off with the green cards, the one minute card. So if you can line up over here uh, to my left, uh, we'll do that. And we're going to try to keep you right on time. So it, uh, we'll try to keep this moving along. I don't know how many of you really want to speak tonight. So I may prompt you politely to wrap up your discussion if you're going over, but the light system, Sean's is going to help us try to keep uh, keep you on track as well. You'll see a yellow light and then a red light come on. And uh, so we appreciate it. Uh, this, again, is conceptual. It's, as the applicants mentioned, they're, they're trying to get more community input. And we appreciate it because often it's just the five of us trying to fill the input. And, and so this is great that we've got such an outpouring of the public. So with that, we'll go ahead and start off, ma'am, if you could come up and just state your name and uh, and let us hear your comments. My name is Peter Fox. I live on McCormick Avenue, which is the first street that doesn't have uh, um, parking restrictions. So even on the average day, we have all the clerks, all of the waitresses and waiters parking on our street. That's, it's typical, we're used to it, you know, we usually accommodate them as best we can, but every time we park and repark, we gotta get the trash can out to hold our spot. <laughs> um, I took the Sandy Leiden history class at Cabrillo, and from the beginning of Capitola, parking has been an issue. And I don't, I'm not disagreeable with this idea of the hotel. I think it scales a little bit big, um, I think the underground parking is completely wackadoodles because I've been here in winter <laughs> storms. And, and I don't know, it, you guys should check out if there's an insurance company that would even take the liability. We could have dark humor see the Mercedes and the Teslas being pulled out. It, that would be a shame, but I, I can see that they could go that way. That's, that's what they can work out. The primary thing is parking. And I tried when we did it five years ago, when we had the big thing at Jade Street Park and tried to do the general plan, a tiered structure, a tiered structure at the end of Bay Avenue by the freeway that's usually just a, 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 a public works drop off spot. If there was a big structure there with some buses, that, that would, that might be a good spot for it because otherwise in the village there is no way and if they take spaces from our parking area uh that's not going to help anyone out thank you mrs fox thank you please leave your card in the white box oh i should have mentioned that the white box there is for your card thank you <laughs> Sure, my name is Mark. I live in the village, a uh, newer resident, but uh, I happen to walk through the parking lot and obviously traffic and parking seems to be the biggest issue. I think everybody that I know of is, seems to be an advocate of a hotel and the necessity of the economics for the city I think is great. Um, but as I walk through, I notice that the people who are supposed to be looking out for the good neighbors are charging handicapped parking. <coughs> you park there as a handicapped person there's a couple of spots they charge you for parking and to me a good neighbor wouldn't do that I understand they may or may not require handicapped parking they provide it what have you but a good neighbor wouldn't do that the other is is the underground parking as proposed is going to include a number of lifts the only way for that to happen in a, in a real world scenario is for there to be enough depth and what I've seen in other projects and other areas is that depth hasn't been allowed and so the, lefts, the lifts are installed, but they're never used because you can't get the height out of them to acquire two vehicles. So the promise of the number of spaces and what have you has to be taken into consideration. I'm out of time. I just yeah. want to. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, appreciate it. Hi, my name is Jago McLeod. These are my kids. Uh, Amani and Eland, who you can see is in his junior guards uh, outfit from representing Capitola today uh, up in Santa Cruz. Uh, my wife, Laura, and I moved here about 15 years ago uh, and chose to raise our family here. Uh, and as we spend time at the beach, uh, I've looked up at the hotel or the apartment building at the end of Cliff and Grand and wondered, how did that happen? Uh, and it occurred to me as this momentum built that there was a moment much like this when that happened. 
Uh, and this is more than about traffic or parking. This is about the service vehicles that come around corners and people that don't live in this neighborhood coming in quickly that are late to drop off laundry. Uh, our kids already go through the village and there's tremendous amount of traffic there. It's too big. It's obnoxiously close to the bluff. It doesn't seem like it's aligned uh, with the, the goals set out in the general plan. Uh, and it doesn't seem like it's even close. So please don't be the group that lets the next thing happen like that. Thank you, Mr. McLeod and McLeod family. <laughs> Uh, my name is Michael Clark. I've been a property owner in the village for too many years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, f first of all, I want to say on the design, I, th I think it's spectacular. And I think they've gone to a great deal of effort to, to make it comfortable for the village. The, the, not only does, will this present great economic benefits for the merchants in the off season it'll increase their their business and their sales tax revenue but the big thing is the potential of over a million dollars a year in room tax revenue which is free free revenue you don't have to share that with anybody uh, the city gets it all and that can go a long way to solving other problems throughout the whole city not just the village uh, and I think the city has a lot of needs there I think it's a great project thank you mr. clerk Good evening, I'm Dennis Norton. I live close to the village here as do most of the people in this audience here We don't drive to the village We, we walk to the village we're people who live here, but we're vastly affected by parking and circulation in the village. And if you look at the geographics of the village itself, it's 75% of the land in this village is allocated to the automobile. That is the problem. Before you discuss a hotel, you have to resolve the issue of trying to park more people in this village. And that has to be resolved before there's any issue. The real answer is, as we started to do, we have, we have remote lots that can be double-decked, you put people up there and you shuttle them down the village. It makes everybody's pedestrian experience so much better, including the people who live here. If we can find a way, let's close, let's close the village down to parking during the summertime. Park everybody up there. Have Barry Swinson, if he wants a hotel there, build a, a second or third story up at Pacific Cove. And let, let the people who live here enjoy the village as well as anybody at Bitzer. It will be a much more inviting place. As many cities have done this. The, the biggest hotel in Santa Monica, very similar to what's being proposed here, has remote parking. Nobody parks at that hotel, and they are very successful. You do not have to park people in this thing. It's certainly cheaper to and park your, people your, up your, the hill than it is to dig a hole underneath this hotel. So think about the parking circulation before consideration of this hotel. Thank thanks, you. Dennis. Some of you may want to go get a yellow card instead of your green card. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be disrespectful up here, but all right, come on, it's on, man. Hi, I'll stay within my one minute. Um, my name is Linda Wadley. My husband, Tim, and I live right in the village. We moved here about seven years ago to retire in this little slice of paradise. Um, we're still able to see the ocean from our house, but uh, that could soon be, be gone. Um, I just feel that the, I think they put a lot of work into this plan, but I just think it's way too big. It's just out of line, out of place. Um, I'm not opposed to a, a smaller hotel or a bed and breakfast, maybe with a restaurant we all could enjoy, but this project just seems out of place. Um, I think it would change the look and the feel of our sweet, charming village. Um, and I can't even imagine how long the construction would take and what a nightmare that might be. And um, if you live anywhere near Monterey Avenue already and you see everybody cutting through to get to the freeway and through the village, um, can't even imagine take that times 89 people with the room and their families so um, anyway I just want to say uh, those are our feelings and um, thank you for hearing me out thank you Miss Wally hi I'm 
Nancy Fricker at 110 Saxon, and I want to say she said that very well. I agree with a lot of what she said. I may have missed something, but it seems to me that, that nothing's been discussed about the water usage, and I know water has been a big concern in our area, so that's an added issue. So I was wondering about that. Great. Thank you, Nancy. Any more yellow cards? I'm sorry, green cards. <coughs> My name is Barbara Muti, and I live at 920 Capitola Avenue, up from the village. And um, some issues that were discussed in 2010 that I don't think anybody brought up this time is the increased sewage from this project and how the sewage system over at the end of the esplanade spews out or however it's handled uh, if, it's a if, if, yeah. if there's if the sanitation district is able to accommodate uh, that much extra sewage the other thing is the uh, if there's is the pool going to be on the roof on the second floor second floor i was just wondering about the the uh, people who live behind uh, the hotel uh, added noise if there's the plaza and just added noise around the area for residents who live near it thank you barb mr fox you can come on up Two quick issues. From looking at the, the photo, um, if you were standing up on Depot Hill and you were looking down into the village, you can currently see the beach pretty easily. But if you see the way the building is stepped back from the cliff, you're not going to have that view anymore because that building stuck way out and it's going to trap your view. The second item is they've stated there are going to be 40 employees where are those 40 employees going to park? That's it. Thank you, Mr. Fox. Any more, any more green cards? Seeing none, we'll move into to the two-minute time frame. We'll bring the yellow cards up. Okay. Here, if you, you could pass these. These are just some photos. Hi, I'm Carol Stern. I live on Balboa Avenue, and I bought here seven years ago. And um, first, I want to thank all of you for protecting the jewel that Capitola has become. And protection is a key word. One week ago, the Mercury News named Capitola as one of the nation's most unspoiled vacation spots. Capitola's ranked fourth in a list of unspoiled vacation spots in the United States. Unspoiled vacation spots is defined as a place that does not cater only to tourists, but maintains its reputation and its spirit. To bring another 100 cars, 250 people into the village is just wrong. Look at these photos that I have taken on a Saturday, July 13th, between 2 and 4 p.m. The beach is packed umbrellas. You couldn't put another 100 umbrellas there. What it strips away, bringing a project of this magnitude strips away the quality of life that all of us local people here enjoy. And this should not be a trade-off for economic vitality. More is not better. The one thing that I heard this gentleman speak about was that it would be better if people stay here for four and five days because they wouldn't be commuting, driving. But do they, this is a democracy. Everyone who comes here for one day from San Jose or from Modesto or from Turlock, they have the right to come here too for one day and enjoy the beach and not just block it off Thank for those Ms. people who can stay for a, a week. Thank you, Mrs. Stern. Okay. We have a paid paradise. You, thank you. Okay. Please look at the pictures.
Any more yellow cards? Okay, we're on to the three minute cards, the orange cards. Before I start, could we open the doors a little bit? It's very, very hot back yep. here. <laughs> Good evening, Planning Commissioners and staff. It's uh, nice to be here to see you again. Usually I watch you on television. <clears throat> I have been here since 1972, and so I've seen a lot of changes. And this particular development is like one that we've fought in the past. People talk about the Crest Apartments, the three-story apartments on Park Avenue, the hotel proposal for City Hall. That led to the Vision Capitola um, meetings that said they wanted to Capitola to stay pretty much the same and not be overdeveloped, which, which the city has had proposals forever for multi-story buildings on Capitola Avenue and so forth. The size is way too, uh, by the way, I'm, I'm speaking on behalf of some citizens from Depot Hill that couldn't be here tonight and also citizens on my street on 42nd Avenue that couldn't be here tonight. The size is too big for the village. Uh, we had a discussion last year, a year before, on whether we were gonna allow three stories in the village, and we said no, two stories is fine. I think what we envisioned for the hotel site was maybe three stories, but not five. We have to go back to the general plan discussions. There was a, a report that was turned into the city for the hotel property, but not all of the things that are in the general plan were agreed upon by the general plan committee. As Ed may remember, the plan was submitted by the planning director at the time, and the city manager made additions to it without consulting with the general plan committee. And so some of these broad other uh, uh, things that you're looking at were not agreed to by the, by the general plan committee. They weren't aware of it. <coughs> and the city council did approve the general plan, but it didn't have that information either at the time, that there were things that were added by the city manager, and if you'd like to know what they were, I'd suggest you ask him. <clears throat> I worked at a uh, hotel for five summers when I was in college and after college in graduate school. It was a 135 room hotel with banquet facilities, cafe, restaurant, <clears throat> excuse me. So I have some familiarity with what it needs in, in terms of parking and this isn't gonna work, I don't think. It's a nice proposal, it's attractive, but it needs to be much, much smaller. <clears throat> We cannot eliminate more parking in the village. We've done that before over the years. We used to have more parking, and little by little we have decreased it, and I've always opposed those. We cannot de uh, decrease it anymore. <clears throat> As you know, in the summertime with the junior guards, the traffic is impossible, and I can't imagine having this kind of a huge development there with all the problems we have already in the summertime. It's terrible in the summertime down there. A lot of locals don't even go down there because of it. So <clears throat> community benefits, I would say community benefits would be paving 41st Avenue, paving Clare Street, and paving Fanmar. That's what I'd like to see. That's what we need. <laughs> so what will work? <clears throat> Retail, housing, office, small restaurant with parking on site. That'll work. And we don't sell ourselves out for the money. So I know we, you won't do that, and the, co the council won't do that. Thanks, Stephanie. Thank you very much. Um, the sanitation district also will not want that extra water because they, when we had the, the, fl the flood in the village, <clears throat> that water all went down into the, to the um, li Live Oak um, Center and it overflowed the, the Live Oak Center and we got fined a million dollars by the Regional Water Quality Control Board because it flooded into Moran Lake. Oh. Since then, they have, they have added a, a larger containment area, but it still won't, won't handle what could happen from this. Thanks, Stephanie. Thank you. Hi, I'll be very brief, probably not three minutes. Uh, Marianne Angelillo and um, my family owns four properties on Lawnway, and years ago that was parking, and that was taken away and made a park, uh, a park. Um, and the property owners at that time were told that don't worry, you'll always have parking on the street, and little by little that has eroded as we all know. 
um, it's pretty difficult. We do, of course, have the two-hour exemption permits, but you can't find a spot. So you go and you don't move and you walk and that's okay. Uh, most things are within walking distance that we need. Um, that was my first point, is to represent those property owners. I happen to be personally, so that's my family who owns that. I personally am renting a place on Monterey, um, and I represent Molly and Mickey Ording, who own 218 Monterey Avenue. And at night, I can open the window and I can hear the beach. I can hear the ocean. I can hear the crashing waves. If I open my window and there's a hotel under me, I'm going to hear the air conditioner. That's what I'm going to hear in the summer. We all know that. And um, coming from Fresno, California, where we built a lovely uh, shopping center called River Park next to Freeway 41, you drive down Freeway 41, and what do you see? You don't see a flat roof. If you're on that bluff, what you're going to see are air conditioning <laughs> units, and you're certainly going to hear them if you live on Depot Hill, anywhere on Depot Hill, because they make a lot of noise. Um, and I agree with the fact that it will obstruct the view of the beach. And so many people, whether they're day use visitors or residents, walk along um, that, not Grand, Grand Avenue and Cliff Avenue, and take photographs and look at the sunset. And um, I just don't think you're going to like what you see. And I do appreciate, because my husband's a developer in Fresno, I appreciate the amount of time and effort that they took into trying to find something that will work. I just, I don't think a three-story anything's gonna work. I think it's gonna have to be small. It's gonna have to be a really small boutique hotel with on-site parking, really small. And that's it. Thank you, Miriam. <laughs> Any, oh, here we go. Kathy Howard on Columbus Drive. Um, I just want to address a few things. Right now, I know that down in the village, many of the restaurant people, um, their employees do come in from out of town. They aren't all Santa Cruz employees. So there's a parking issue that happens with that. And um, besides the skateboards or whatever goes through. The parking is just <coughs> gone. We don't have parking. They say they're going to have shuttle parking or valet parking from where? My question is from where? Is there another lot that could be used as parking where they could bring them in? That might be a viable solution to do that. Um, we already have so many people here that is really good. It's good for the economy. But the one thing that really stands out to me is what is the character of Capitola? And we have been chiseling away at that. You know, what makes the beach area down there around the palm trees and stuff really nice is that there's some open space. And that open space is what opens it up enough to feel like it's a larger space than what it is. Um, so I would like to see that character same, stay the same. I do appreciate the amount of work that went into it. The design's beautiful. But saying that, I don't want another Dream Inn in Capitola on our cliffs. You know, I remember Santa Cruz Dream Inn before it got built there. It changed the whole character of what it is. We have to have business. We need to have the income. It does help the economy, but not at the expense that it changes everything so much that we don't have character here anymore. Um, the other thing is, is um, I heard the comparable with Fairfield Inn, which is on 41st. The reason why that was so supported was because it's on 41st and that's commercial area. It isn't our personal area. I don't think we should leave out the people who live in Live Oak or other areas that do spend money here. You can go down there any morning at seven o'clock and on and find people who come in, serve for a couple hours and leave. That is the dream of the people who have lived here, who have homes here to maintain that kind of thing. And I just think that the scale should at least be dropped back to three story. I do uh, appreciate what they want to offer us, but it's way too large for this small city. Thank you. Thanks, Kathy. <laughs> we have any more orange cards? Anybody else would like to speak? Okay. <clears throat> Uh, 
Hello. <clears throat> I'm Nils Kisling, and I've lived here long enough that I qualify as a historical artifact. <laughs> And uh, this project just has too many twos. There are just too many twos. It's too massive, there's too much water demand, too many parking spaces lost, too many more tourists, and too much added traffic and congestion. This thing is too massive. It's gonna leave a permanent impact on the visual Capitola that we all love, and the quaint Capitola that we all voiced a strong opinion for during Vision Capitola. One of the top responses that came out of Vision Capitola is to maintain an existing scale and charm of the village. Do not overbuild. The second too much is too much water demand. Where's this water gonna come from to support this project? We're all being told to conserve water and we're all being told that we're overdrafting the aquifer. Hotels use a lot of water. There's too many parking spaces that are gonna be lost. The developer proposes to eliminate up to 22 village street parking spots around the hotel. Another 50 parking spots are gonna be eliminated from the up upper public parking lot and designated for hotel employees to use. That's crazy. Then there's too many more tourists. I heard earlier, you know, you can't fit any more tourists on our beach in the summertime. You know, how many more visitors do you wanna try to fit on the beaches in our restaurants, and how many more tourists can our infrastructure support? It's just too much. Lastly, it's too much added traffic and congestion. You know, all of us that live here, we all know how crazy it is to try to drive through the village. You know, I think if you're gonna support this hotel, I think the Svensson builders should drive 25 laps around the village <laughs> between three and five o'clock. <laughs> yeah, see how long that takes. <laughs> you know, this project is simply too much. Please do not support a project of this scale with such harmful impacts to Capitola. This is the Capitola that we all know and we all love. Capitola should be about us. It should not be about them. Thanks, Nils. Okay, do we have anybody else that would like to speak? So what's gonna happen is we're gonna go back to the commission and we'll have a discussion and uh, some input for the applicant and uh, we're gonna stop all public input. So I'm gonna give you one more chance. This is your opportunity. Oh, here you go. Look. I, I saw you back to the green card. I'll accept green, yellow, red. I don't just, come on up. <laughs> Larry Abbottball uh, from El Camino Medio. That entire area is gonna be severely impacted and we will lose our views. But more importantly, you're faced with a really interesting and almost historical decision. The whole flavor of historic Capitola is gonna be in your hands. So it's gonna change it. It will be the centerpiece, I believe, of, uh, of Capitola. And, uh, you know, it, it is a much, you know, I have self-interest, which is I, hey, I liked it when the, <laughs> I liked it when the, uh, when the movie theater was there. Okay, so, so but, but uh, you know, you, you obviously know this, but uh, it is a severe thing and it will change Capitola, you know, right from the bottom up. And, uh, you know, I am, again, you know, cons concerned about what's gonna happen on El Camino Medea. Thank you. Thanks, Larry. <laughs> Uh, Anne Marie Weiss. Uh, I have junior guards and support Capitola wholeheartedly. Um, I think a hotel's actually a great idea at a smaller scale. Um, my concern would be these meeting rooms and banquet rooms, let's be honest, these are beach weddings. So now we've got every weekend for six months of the year being filled up for weddings. That's what's gonna happen. It'd be happy if it wasn't, but that's what's gonna happen. So imagine what we're gonna do every weekend now. Just think about it. Thank you, Ms. White. Uh, okay, Any, anybody else out there? Well, we appreciate your comments and I uh, appreciate that uh, they were civil and um, I'm sure that the applicant got some notes and we'll bring it back to the Planning Commission for comments. So who would like to? Start. You want to start? Happy to start. Okay, we'll start with start Commissioner Ruth. 
<laughs> I've lived in. Uh, well, you have something to say? No, no, I thought you were addressing me specifically. Oh, no, no, I'm just going to make my comments. I've lived in Capitola for 55 years. Uh, I can recall in the wintertime you could shoot a cannon down the Esplanade and not hit anyone. That's how it's changed. Uh, the one thing I love about this community is that when people perceive a threat to the village, they circle the wagons. And we get these great turnouts for these meetings. Uh, this project, and I, th I think you guys will agree, that it assumes that it qualifies for those additional density bonuses because it meets those four criteria. And the four criteria, I don't know if you guys recall them up there, respect for the scale and character of the neighboring structures and enhances Capitola's unique sense of place, contributes to the economic vitality, uh, minimizes impacts on the beach and village, and the parking should minimize vehicle traffic. Now, I can't assume that you're meeting those criteria, and if you don't meet those criteria, then you're only allowed 58,000 square feet, and you're only allowed 27 feet in height. So perhaps in between there, there could be a, a happy medium. Because uh, I don't think this project meets those criteria to allow that kind of density bonus. Uh, I would like to see the architectural style reflects something of an historical vein, uh, something along the lines of the old hotel, Victorian, Italian Gothic. Uh, I find this design looks like Southern California, any beach community in Southern California, and I don't think it fits the unique character or enhances the character of Capitola. Uh, I counted 46 parking spaces in the lot on your property, not 26. I was down there today and counted each individual lined space. Uh, there are six off-street parking spaces that front, or on-street parking spaces that, that front the property. So I'm assuming those would all be lost. So that's a total of 52 parking spaces. And if we're going to take another 25 to 50 in the upper parking lot, we're looking at somewhere from roughly 75 to 102 public parking spaces lost that accommodate visitors in the village. Uh, I'm not sure how we offset that kind of loss for people that want to come here unless they park in the neighborhoods where there's unrestricted parking. Uh, while there's no traffic counts available for this concept, obviously, uh, we know it's going to have a, a huge impact and you're first two options of making the Esplanade two-way or making it one way on the other end and eliminating our palm tree, which when you come down Monterey Avenue down the hill, that is like the focal point for the beach and village. Uh, so I think we need to work out something where you do use the in-lieu parking and perhaps even maybe some kind of structure in the parking lot where people could check in, drop off their luggage, and a shuttle serve so they don't even have to drive their vehicles into the village might be something reasonable that might work. Uh, so I'd like to see a substantially smaller proposal, uh, something that more closely reflects the historical site, reflects the old hotel, I think if you could do something like that, I don't think you'd get any argument from this community. They want to see something like that restored down there, but not just overwhelm the village. Uh, I know the FAR, you have an option to go to 3.0 if you can meet those benefits. Uh, for me personally, when that was brought forth in the general plan, I was voice concerned about it because I saw it as an end run around the zoning requirements and the findings are very subjective. I mean, you could ask a hundred people and get a hundred different answers because there's no way to measure those findings. Uh, so I'm concerned about the density, the height. I'm not sure how a pool would be utilized, but I think the noise would carry up onto Depot Hill. Uh, I think some height and design variation that 
that fronts along El Camino Medio because those people that have those homes on El Camino Medio, it looks like right now they're going to be looking at blank walls with windows in them, even though they vary in heights. And uh, I would like you to consider reducing or eliminating the conference room space. And uh, I'm not sure with, with, with that particular use, and I think the lady was correct in saying it's gonna be utilized all the time because it's such a desirable place to have a wedding. Uh, I think it could overwhelm the village. So my opinion is uh, there's probably some tremendous economic benefits. I mean, those are pretty obvious. But for me personally, I'm not willing to sell the soul of the village for economic benefits. So that's my, my statement. Okay. We might as well go in line. You, are you ready? Okay. Might as well. So I'm going to keep my comments uh, brief and not try and be comprehensive tonight. Just touch on a few things. Uh, first, uh, it's great to see the uh, passion and interest of uh, the community. We, we come here once a month and it's often very lonely. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a nice welcome change. So uh, you kind of might have got the idea that uh, I was the chair of the General Plan Advisory Committee over a three year period and that we put in a lot of effort uh, and the hotel was one of the bigger issues that we dealt with. There was 41st and there were some others, but we put a lot of time in and um, Mayor, ex-Mayor Harlan is correct that uh, what ended up in the general plan it may not be completely what was discussed, but uh, in, in my view, the design uh, of this project complies fairly well with at least what we tried to accomplish in the general plan process. I think the developer made a great effort to to follow the guidelines and I I know this is personal. Commissioner Ruth doesn't like the design. He wants a different style but you know, I personally am, am fine with the design part of the building. I'm fine with the height of the project. Um, the concern I have I'm going to talk a little bit about change because uh, change is a, a constant and Capitola was one thing in 1890 and it was something different in 1920 and it was something different when I came 50 years ago and it's going to be something different 20 years from now. So those of you who want to freeze uh, a point in time, uh, that's, that's not uh, going to happen. That has never happened and never will happen. So. We can't be afraid of things changing if we do it um, intelligently. But what's changed for me from the time that the general plan went into effect and now is, I'm, maybe my perception's wrong, but I think the congestion in Capitola has increased astronomically over the last few years. It may have to do with Highway 1. I don't know what it is, but I can walk into down to my office a lot faster most days than I can drive and I have to pick uh, it, it just everyone knows this the congestion is uh, has increased markedly and the problem with this project for me is not the design and style and even size it's the traffic circulation congestion issue and I don't think the developer has really tackled it in a viable way yet. Um, the ideas that were, have kind of been thrown out in a very preliminary way are, are ideas that we actually started studying at various times and it's never really gotten anywhere. So I, I don't know what the answer is. I'm, I'm hopeful that technology is the answer and I haven't ever gotten much traction with this before but I've, I've been saying that the autonomous vehicle is gonna revolutionize uh, <laughs> us in ways that we don't really even realize right now and building large parking structures for example we may turn out to be uh, a waste of time and money because we're not quite sure I mean well we all know how fast things are changing and that's one area where the biggest companies in the country are throwing half of their resources into figuring it all out and so you know maybe a smaller pro product right now would satisfy enough people I kind of doubt it but uh, I'm thinking more that the answer is uh, some changes in the future due to technology that make the ability to have a hotel in that location in the Capitola Village work. 
So that's that's my thoughts at this point. Thank you, and Commissioner Newman. Commissioner Christensen. Um, I agree with um, Commissioner Newman. I with considering the concept of the proposal of the hotel, just the way it looks. I think it needs to be fine-tuned in many areas. Um, but I think that I, I like how this conversation is bringing up um, the existing problem with congestion in Capitola. Um, the, the pictures that uh, one of the speakers gave us was very <laughs> telling of what a typical weekend is in Capitola. Um, I hear the developer saying that the people will stay, that the cars will stay underground. Um, I, I think it just more points need to be addressed of how, of how the hotel will remedy the congestion and, and the community itself. Um, the second point I, I have is um, the homeowners of on. Com Camino Medio, that you say? El Camino. Camino Medio. <laughs> uh, that entire side of the hotel, as it's addressed in the renderings, I'm fairly concerned about. <laughs> it seems to be a big, blank, stark wall. Um, if you pull up the overall plan, plan view of the hotel, that's the that view, one That's well. the view right there, yeah. And that's it. Um, there's not really even a sidewalk addressed. Not that anybody would be walking necessarily in front of the garage but just enhancing the community space on that road at least not just having it be blank and sterile um, but generally speaking I agree pretty much with Commissioner Newman and yeah thank you, thank you. Commissioner Wilk so I use the general plan as uh, my Bible as to whether or not uh, uh, how I should evaluate this. And though it seems to me we're backpedaling a little bit on it, um, um, uh, just like the applicant, the, they used something that was worked on very hard and a lot of outreach. And we have a general plan. And so I say, okay, well, does this meet that general plan? Now, uh, there's a lot of issues, but in terms of whether or not, and, uh, and one of the vice presidents of Swenson just mentioned, oh, well, they want some insight as to what, whether or not even to have a hotel. Well, I would think that the general plan says, yes, we want a hotel there, and the only question is how big. Now, any hotel is gonna have the issue of traffic and sewage and water credits and all those things and I think those are hurdles that may kill this thing I mean water is is a huge issue around here sewage was brought up as well those issues alone may dictate how large this can be but I, I'm assuming that you guys can figure that out and I don't think you have yet but I'm assuming those are obstacles to be overcome not things that will kill the project outright um, I've been the treasurer of this town up until the beginning of this year and so forgive me if I say I like the uh, the financial benefits that alone I think is enough to get the far credit because we are facing a pension crisis and if you like Capitola the way it is we're gonna need more money because our pension burden is increasing every year and it's starting next year so if you want to talk to the and this will probably come up at the city council so i won't belabor it but the financial issue is a real one and it needs to be considered seriously i mean we have a we have a uh, rainy day fund to bridge the gap but it's only a bridge and this would be a long-term um, issue that would help that so um with regards to the design, again, I assumed that um, we wanted a hotel, so I was kind of kind of going into the details a little bit. Um, one of the issues about pedestrian friendly and, and massing issues associated with what you want a good urban planner to approve, um, you have a long stretch of um, 
uh, the uh, along Monterey Avenue where there is no doorway I mean you have that that whole bar there if there was like an entrance to the bar uh, a doorway um, that would make it uh, I guess at least according to standard urban planners um, designs that would be um, it would be more pedestrian friendly and, and, and more uh, towards uh, something that you'd like in a small village um, I don't have a particular preference on the traffic circulation um, I think any one of those uh, if it made it made sense I mean the I guess the third one where you just leave the traffic as it is and just put more traffic through the village that's probably the least beneficial but either reversing the flow or having the roundabout I think either of those could be studied and and might be worthwhile I uh, again in terms of uh, meeting uh, community benefits I think the meeting rooms until I heard about the the uh, wedding thing I thought that was a benefit no I'm, <laughs> no, I'm not sure about that but the increased village uh, in, uh, increased village businesses I mean I've heard city planners and councilmen saying uh, you know when you have an empty uh, an empty shop or a, 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 it's it's like a smile with a with a with a, with a missing tooth so we want a vibrant village we want to have um, not empty empty uh, villages uh, empty uh, housing oh, I, I'm sorry I can't speak but anyway I think this will help create a nice vibrant village so I like that um, the notion of an off-site parking structure maybe that's something that would would calm a lot of people's concerns because obviously parking is a big issue and former mayor Norton brought up the notion of of having a off-site parking maybe that's something you'd want to look into uh, overall I think you've made a, a decent attempt to meet the uh, requirements of the general plan and so from uh, that standpoint I would think this would be worth considering further thank you okay um, and before I, I kind of give my um, perspective and obviously this is very subjective it's uh, there's a lot of subjective issues but there are some very <clears throat> realistic issues that the community brought out tonight and really this is this is for you folks to go back and decide where you want to go with this and whether it's feasible whether it pencils it out uh, we, we can't really do that for you you've heard some of the concerns um, and so I, I appreciate the community coming out because often as uh, Commissioner Newman stated it's lonely here and you you depend on us to try to make some of these uh, opinions for you and so we appreciate you coming out and doing that and I can't add a, a lot to some of those um, that's already been given the the issues of water and sewer those are just issues I personally I think that you face as a, a company any business that would have to go in there so I, I don't really have those concerns either it's gonna work for or you, for you or it's not but I'll kind of go through uh, the the guidance that you requested uh, through the steps uh, as far as it goes back to the general plan we've been talking about a hotel for many years now and and while I know Commissioner Newman was the chair of that I don't know how much was changed specifically about the hotel I do know as we wrote the rewrote the zoning code um, the Planning Commission took this into uh, consideration and what the hotel would be why be like and that's why we said that you there must be this green belt above the bluff and um, unfortunately for some of you unless you looked online you didn't see all the drawings because there were some renderings that uh, identified from Depot Hill for example what it would look like and it and it really doesn't um, block the view of the ocean from Depot Hill oh, do, we, do we have that one yeah so it, blo it blocks part of the you see from uh, I'm sorry from the Well, you, we, you can have, we can, we can discuss this, but it, you, if I live on, I just happen to live on Depot Hill. I know that bench. I know that stairway. I do it every single day, practically. So when you look at that view, it's an obstructed view to that part of the ocean where, where you can see sometimes where the junior guards are, but you can't honestly always see the ocean from that area. So I don't know that it's going to obstruct the view that much. It's going to obstruct the view from El Camino Media without a doubt. So I see those concerns. The design, massing, and articulation um, are subjective. 
for me, I don't, I don't have a real big concern. My thought is the community is going to weigh in enough to help um, them come to some type of understanding of how many rooms it's actually going to be and what that massing is going to be. Um, the height, like I said, I don't have a real heartburn over the, the height of the hotel. Um, parking is something that, you know, I used to be on the Traffic and Parking Commission before we finally uh, abolished it because we weren't getting anywhere. Uh, as was mentioned by many people, it's been the issue in Capitola long before um, I was born here in 1958. So um, that's something that is always going to be an issue here. But I think the traffic circulation and the discussion of parking and how we do that, I, I have never been an advocate, if you go back in history and look at um, my position on the um, Traffic and Parking Commission, of adding um, additional parking, a high-rise parking area. I never felt it should be the residents of Capitola's um, responsibility to pay for more tourism to come to this town. And either tourism will support it or it won't. And, the, and the, by that I mean if there's, there's going to be enough tourism that's going to pay for parking that would pay for an additional parking structure, but I didn't believe it should be the taxpayer's burden to pay for more tourists. And I also believe that on, as this picture shows, there are certain days that the beach is just overwhelmed and there's not enough room for more tourism. But having said that, parking for the hotel, I think, um, can be somewhat subjective. Swinton owns that parking lot today. It's not a publicly owned parking lot. It, and obviously, they make bucks off, money off of that, open it up to the public, and it's not just sitting there as a vacant area. But they have no responsibility to provide that parking. And so if we look at the number of cars that go in those spots, and I think maybe some of the con con confusion or maybe the discussion about how many parking spots are there, some of those are leased out if I'm not, uh, if I'm not uh, correct. So that some of those are already leased spots in that way. Maybe that's why the 26 are already designated for visitor spots. But um, that already uh, takes part of the parking that the hotel would have to use in the process. Now whether they can get insurance and whether it gets flooded in the basement, I leave that up to them. That's for them and their risk management group to figure out what would happen with the cars under there. Um, the parking circulation, the traffic circulation, I think, um, I, I think the option of reversing it absolutely would not work. If we had cars trying to make left turns on the Stockton off the Esplanade, if we reversed it, the traffic would be backed up on the Esplanade for never cause, forever because they'd never be able to make that left turn. So I don't see how that would work. Um, having it turn around the island, and I, I know that I I obviously I think it was a mistake leaving the palm tree because the palm tree is not going anywhere. Um, so <laughs> either way, having that as a turnaround down there, um, I don't know that that couldn't work. It's a possibility. Uh, Matt, could could we bring up uh, option three where it's a current system? I so I, I, I don't know. I, I've been looking at on how we could make it somewhat feasible, regardless of the size. I don't want to, I'm not saying that it, it's going to be the 88 room, but regardless of size, we have to figure out traffic flow and how they get there. But if you look at where the stop sign is on the Esplanade as you cross over to Monterey, where currently coming down Monterey, you're directed to make a right turn because it's a one-way street. If we allowed that to come through just long enough with a limit line for a car to make a left turn into the parking area, El Camino Medio, does that make sense to you? I don't know if you can draw it with your aerial, but it would allow it to both ways. Either you come around the Esplanade or there's room, we may have to take part of the bulb out of the sidewalk there, but there's room to add at least one or two cars maybe to come across the stop sign to make a left turn into the uh, valet or parking area. Um, that's one consideration. Um, let me see if I, what other notes I had. Obviously, you know, it was mentioned about um, throwing, throwing out the character of Capitola for uh, the economic value. And I personally don't know that we're throwing out the character by adding the hotel. I think it would be actually the center, one of the centerpieces. Um, I don't know that it makes us Southern California or, or not. That's, again, a subjective thought. I think having a hotel always, always, if you live here, you have people asking you, where can I stay at the hotel? So your choices are the quality in it by the freeway, which God bless them, it's, it's, a, it's a place for people to sleep, but I don't always recommend friends to stay there. And then we have the Fairfield, and, uh, and then it gets spread out. So I, I think we 
desperately could use a hotel in the community. I think in the village would be great. The size and scale, I'm, I don't, you know, it's something that we're going to leave up for the community, for you. Now this, just so you know, this goes to the city council and you have your same opportunity to go speak to the city council when they do the presentation there. Um, again, they're just trying to get feedback. But the public benefits, it was mentioned about they'd rather see money spent on Fanmar being paved, Monterey being paved, Claire's being paved, all of us would agree with that, but from where? I also happen to be on the uh, finance committee before I got kicked off. So, <laughs> and, and part of that was because I have a very conservative view towards our city finance. And I, I think that, um, you know, we have a very small budget, $14.5 million a year for the whole city. So where do our city council members choose to spend that money? We may agree or disagree, but we desperately need a way to take care of both our PERS obligation and um, our infrastructure within the city. And, you know, it was mentioned by one of the uh, members that came up from the community members that came up and spoke about um, this, um, you know, obviously the, the TOT and what that money would add. It's, it's uh, add to our <coughs> community. This is money that's, it's, um, it's, it's not free, it costs somebody to come here. Tourism pays for it, which means tourism is helping to pay for supporting our community, because right now it's you and I paying for supporting all the tourism in, in this community. I would love to see a way to have the tourism that comes, which, you know, if you've lived here long enough, you know that it's one of the great benefits is because it is a tourist destination spot. But I would love to see tourism help pay for uh, some of our public works members who, you know, this weekend spent uh, their Saturday and Sunday trying to come fix water problems that happened because of uh, busted irrigation lines due to the wharf to wharf race signs and so on. Who pays for right now? It's you and I paying for that. So um, I would love to see a hotel personally that would help. Uh, bring some character, uh, opportunity for some of our friends, family, and other people to enjoy our little village and also help offset some of those costs. So those are some of my perspectives. Um, I think there's some benefits to all of it. I really like that you took into consideration our junior guard. They're part of our community. Uh, I like how that part f um, fits into the hotel. So with that, I, does anybody have anything else they would like to add? Again, we're not, we're not taking any action, formal action tonight as a commission. Um, the biggest part was for uh, the applicant to hear your concerns, and uh, I think um, that was well stated, and I think from the letters we received, and I'm sure we pass those on to the applicant as well, the letters we received, um, they're very consistent, and probably there's no surprises. The, the concerns were uh, outlined in our general plan as well, so um, with that, I think I will bring that to a close. Oh, I was Peter. just wondering if the applicant would have any further questions of us. Okay, that, that's a good point. Do you have anything you would like, any more clarifications? Uh, not, nothing to clarify unless Jesse has anything to clarify. No, no we just, uh, we really appreciate your time. We know it's a late night and we want to thank the public. We understand you're very passionate about this and thank you for coming out. We'll see you at the city council meeting. And can I ask, I, I should know that date already, but I don't. Do we know when they're coming to the city council meeting? We do, August, um, August 22nd. Second. August 22nd. August 22nd, the City Council will be receiving the presentation so um, you can come and state your thoughts and concerns uh, on that date as well and I'm sure they would appreciate that. Any discussion from staff? No, um, great discussion. I think there was some clear direction on a future application and um, no further discussion from staff. Okay, and um, I guess that moves us to the director's report. I appreciate you folks coming tonight, um, and I appreciate your input. I know that the applicant does as well, so thank you very much, and thank you for uh, being congenial in the process. There's no director's report this okay, evening. Okay, no director's, any commission comments? None here. As you leave tonight, I will tell you that uh, National Night Out is Tuesday, August 6th, so Jade Park at 5 o'clock, go get a burger and meet our great police officers and other members of the community, so thank you. And with that, we're adjourned.